What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Ender's Notes. Today, we're talking about goodbyes. Saying goodbye to a loved one can be tough, especially if the relationship has had its ups and downs. That's how I feel about the big yellow bird Zapdos. For those of you that don't know, the first year of Pokemon Unite, we spent playing on Ramoet Stadium. The final objective that spawned in the last two minutes during the final stretch was Zapdos. So a team that gets the final shot on Zapdos was granted with massive experience, massive heals. Zapdos would do an incredible amount of damage and stun the enemy team, as well as leave all of their available goals defenseless. And because it was during the final stretch, the point totals were doubled as well. So you could be down 400 points in the late game, a massive amount of XP, and all you would need to do is get that final hitting blow on the zap and you would win the game. Because of that, we saw some comeback victories that probably weren't deserved, but can't hate the player, gotta hate the game. Um, and it allowed for potentially less skilled players or teams to win games that they might not have deserved. Um, I can tell you I lived it firsthand. Definitely lost a lot of games to Zapdos that might not have deserved to lose. Lost a lot of games to Zapdos that I probably did deserve to lose as well in my career. So I, I don't want to ever blame game mechanics for, for results that I've had in my career. But with the new changes coming to Unite, um, assuming we stayed on Remo at Stadium, we would have seen a reduction in move speed buffs from 80% to 30% on players unite moves and much smaller amounts of shields much smaller uh, amounts of attack speed or not attack speed being given to different pokemon it, what i'm trying to say is that flipping zapdos would have been much harder assuming we got to keep playing on it because unite moves just aren't as powerful and if you do win zapdos it'd be much harder to score off of it as well <laughs> Some of the ways a lot of comebacks happened was all the Unite moves would be popped off. You would instantly get zapped, get healed back up to full. So if you took any damage during it, you'd be fine. And you'd have this massive speed bonus for eight seconds that you could use to run to goals. And it was really, really hard to counter, even if you had a massive lead going into the game. Um, but we'll never be able to experience any of this because from what it looks like, it's time to say goodbye and we're not going to have Zapdos around any longer. What I would like, and this is what I would like to see, it's my opinion, is that we keep Remo at Stadium and we keep Zapdos. And I know what you might be thinking, that look, you just explained how bad of a mechanic it can be. Uh, you lost games because of it. It potentially ruined solo key for some people and it might have been responsible. No, it probably, it definitely was responsible for hundreds of thousands of players quitting the game. Uh, so I know why they wanted to make a new map. They made a new map. They didn't just nerf Zapdos. This allows for new and returning players to see like, oh, Zapdos is gone. Maybe I'll come check out the game. If they simply just nerfed Zapdos uh, to what Rayquaza does now, maybe it wouldn't have gotten as much attention. So I'm glad that they're doing that. But I think there's a world where we could have a balanced version of Zapdos and this new map with Rayquaza exist together in unison. So my idea, and I had some dialogue on Twitter that really helped shape my opinion and my thoughts on this, is that we get a new map every year. So we got a new map after Worlds this year, and that map gets added to the map rotation for both competitive and ranked. Um, in ranked, I would like to see the first season after that new map is added, be completely exclusive to that new map. People are coming to play that map. Everyone wants to try it out. You know, it makes sense that all of our games are on the new map. But after a season has passed, I'd like for all the other maps, and in this case for this year, it would just be Remoat and the Sky Ruins. I would like them to exist together. Why? Well, it adds replayability, which is huge for games. You know, right now you go through one or two zap flips, maybe three, and you're ready to call it, especially if you lose all of them. It doesn't feel as rewarding to play the game necessarily especially if you're on the losing end of those flips. Um, but if it only happens about half the time, it's only in half of your games, and maybe if only half of those games are being flipped, a total of qu a quarter of your games are going to have that kind of feeling where the game was out of your control, which isn't as bad 
And as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a lot harder to flip after the new balance changes that we've seen as well. Uh, we might also see a wider pool of Pokemon be viable, where on Remo at Stadium, you know, the buffs are placed in different locations, which allows for a more dynamic early game and competitive. Um, and the buffs have different effects. The blue buff, for example, on Remo app does bonus damage to neutrals, which ironically does help you for, to flip. Uh, very much so, actually. But on Thea Sky Ruins, the blue buff gives cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction, a stat that's generally more beneficial for mage type Pokemon. So think Delphox, Cramorant, Pikachu, um, those type of Pokemon. So you might see a difference in styles on different maps. And I think that would allow the, the Pokemon Unite development team to have Pokemon exist on both types of maps. Like, oh, my Q popped. What map are we on? We're at, on Thea. This is where the majors are better. Admittedly, that could make the game more difficult to balance. Uh, and that might be one of the downsides for having it this way. But there is precedence. It's not a brand new idea. I'm not the first one to think of this. Heroes of the Storm, a very popular game where me and my friends originated our um, some of our professional careers. Not me, but a lot of my friends. I, I played the game a lot. I was really high rated on the ladder, on solo queue. And funny enough, I did it exclusively playing support in that game as well. Um, that game had, when I started playing, it had anywhere like five to six maps, and it eventually grew to like nine or ten. And some maps felt more balanced than others, admittedly. Sometimes you would get a map and, you know, people would groan like, oh no, we got Brax's holdout, and it would feel annoying. But it didn't happen so often, and every time you queued up for a game of Here's a Storm, the experience was different. Different heroes were viable on different maps. Different heroes were stronger on maps. The lane setups were different. Um, the metas were different. And for both competitive and ranked, it added an additional layer of gameplay that was just so much fun. Um, in League of Legends and Dota, other the other two popular MOBAs, they have one map that gets constantly updated and they've had for years and years. But I think that's more of an old school way of doing things. Um, if you look at first-person shooter games, whether it's Valorant, Counter-Strike GO, um, you know, Call of Duty, these games have traditionally always had different maps, and I think it's added to the success of these games that the games feel different, they feel dynamic, different strategies can be employed. In the case of Valorant, I don't have a lot of experience, but I assume different agents or heroes, whatever they might call them in their game, might be stronger in on certain maps compared to others so i would say that the pros outweigh the cons but i had some good discourse on twitter a lot of people agreed with me many people also disagreed with me i'm curious what you think tell me would you be happy to keep zapdos in the game if it wasn't as cringe let me know in the comments below and let me know what you want me to talk about next goodbye I have to just stop running there. Went to side beam that. How are we losing this fight?
Pan Jemehupa.